So the Apple TV is a peculiar product in Apple's lineup, and there's a lot more to it than meets the eye of just being another way to stream Netflix. But to get a new one of Apple TV 4K 32 gigabytes costs $180. Instead, with that money, you could get three Lutron Cassetta light switches or 10 Nanoleaf Essential bulbs. So whether you're thinking about your first potential Apple TV per purchase or additional ones for other TVs in your home, let's go through some criteria of why you would want an Apple TV and then places where maybe it doesn't make as much sense and you can save the money and maybe spend it other places in your smart home. My name is Eric Wielander. Welcome to my channel all about building a better smart home with Apple and HomeKit. And with that, I'm going to focus a lot on the smart home tech stuff with this video, but of course, I'm going to cover some of the other entertainment features you also get with an Apple TV just to make sure we have our bases covered and you can make the right decision. So first off, speaking of smart home tech though, is that the Apple TV can serve as your HomeKit hub. And without getting into too much detail, a HomeKit hub is just a central command center for a lot of the stuff happening related to Apple's HomeKit platform in your home. So let's say you're away from your home, you wanna control something on your iPhone back at home, it will then talk to your HomeKit hub back at home and that will control the different lights or whatever else you wanna set up. And it also runs some of your automation. So let's say you want lights to come on at sunset. Well, the HomeKit hub can watch and you know when it turns sunset, it will turn those lights on. It also does some other things like processing HomeKit Secure Video. So if you have cameras that talk to Apple's HomeKit Secure Video, then the processing for that happens locally on your HomeKit hub. Now, you can get a HomePod mini or an iPad being always on as two other options for HomeKit hubs. So if you already have one of those, you don't need an additional HomeKit hub, although it does give you some redundancy. HomeKit does automatically fail over to a different HomeKit hub if one of them loses power or something else. So you get that additional benefit there. The other benefit with having an Apple TV as one of your HomeKit hubs is that it can be hard hardwired via ethernet into your home network. So a HomePod mini of course can only connect via Wi-Fi. But with uh, Apple TV being hardwired in, if it's doing things like processing HomeKit secure video, that's gonna probably be more reliable if it's happening over a hard wire rather than wireless. Again, there's no way to have fine grained control over this as a user or really to see clearly from Apple's side if there's any clear benefit here. But I just think theoretically, it just makes more sense to have that ethernet option in your home and that's probably gonna be more dependable. Now, speaking of being a HomeKit command center, the newest generation of Apple TV 4K actually serves as a thread border router in your home. So HomePod minis and Apple TV 4Ks, the, the 2021 version, both serve as thread border routers. And what that means is that it can talk to all these new HomeKit devices that work over Thread. And Thread is this really reliable, low power network system that is just designed for smart home devices from the ground up. And I made a whole video on the details and the origins of Thread last year on my channel. It's linked somewhere here on the screen if you're not familiar with it. But what a border router does is it connects all those Thread devices to your home network of like your internet and your Wi-Fi and stuff that it needs for HomeKit. So a thread border router is critical to get thread to work. And of course, if you already have HomePod minis nearby, those can serve as thread border routers, but adding an additional Apple TV 4K to the mix, that's gonna serve as a border router and just strengthen your thread network. Now, one of the other smart home reasons I love an Apple TV is with Control Center. Apple has Control Center as a concept across a lot of their devices. And of course, it's on Apple TV as well. You press and hold the TV button and in from the side comes Control Center. Now, this gives you a quick way to see your HomeKit cameras. So if you're sitting on your couch watching TV, but you heard some weird noise, you wanna see what's going on outside, you can pull up your cameras right there and get a view. If someone's at your doorbell and they ring your doorbell, by default, it'll automatically come up with a notification on the screen 
showing you that they're there. So then you're not gonna miss someone at your doorbell while you're watching TV. And then in general, you also just have HomeKit controls. Uh, my favorite way to do this is to talk to Siri. So you hold down the Siri button on the remote and then it will allow you to just talk to Siri and, and ask for any kind of HomeKit commands you would do with a HomePod or your phone or anything else. So that's always a great option too. Now, one of the other really cool features that you can find in Control Center is being able to watch your TV content with AirPods. So I did a whole video about spatial audio and how you can just get this amazing cinema experience. And the beauty of it is then you're not keeping up anybody else in your home if you're trying to watch content late at night when everybody else is asleep. And that could be really handy if maybe the TV is nearby where other people might be sleeping being able to pair your AirPods to your Apple TV could be a great way to watch that content. And you can't do that with something like a HomeKit TV or a TV that's compatible with AirPlay. You need the Apple TV to make that happen. Now, briefly, one of the other things that you probably are already familiar with is that Apple TV comes with all these nice screen savers. So those are really cool to put on just if you have music playing or you know people around, they look really nice. Although at this point, so many people have Apple TVs <laughs> I feel like we've all seen the same screensavers. Now, Apple keeps coming out with a few more of them every year, but come on, Apple. Why don't you feature Chicago, like the, the town where I live? It's the third biggest city in the US. We need a Chicago aerial screensaver for the Apple TV. Just make it happen, please. But other than that, it's a great feature. Now, one of my favorite ways to use the Apple TV and one of my family's favorite ways to use the Apple TV is this app called Sketch Party TV. Now, you might know that Apple TVs can play games, but the selection of games out there isn't all that great. I mean, Apple Arcade has some, but one of the games that we've really loved as a family is Sketch Party TV. This pairs with an iPhone or an iPad and it's Pictionary essentially, but like taken to the big leagues where you have scoreboards and timers on the TV and different teams. And so you pass the iPad or iPhone to the person who's supposed to draw the picture other, and they see the word on the screen and then they're supposed to draw the picture. Other people just see the drawing on the TV and are supposed to guess. And then if they hit the correct button, it shows the word to everybody in the room on the screen just to make sure no one's cheating. And I find this works really great if you have an iPad with an Apple Pencil. It's a really nice drawing experience and just a fun way to sit on the couch together with the family, divide up into teams and play some Pictionary against each other. And maybe there's some other party games you enjoy on the Apple TV that I haven't tried. So let us know in the comments. I'd love to hear about those as well. One thing that a lot of people out there seem to like to do, which I don't think is a good idea and I don't recommend it, but you know, I keep hearing and people who just swear by it, which is using your HomePods as speakers with an Apple TV. So you can pair HomePods as speakers. So if you got some HomePods, you wanna use them as speakers, an Apple TV is the way to go for that, of course. Now, one of the other things that I talked about in my video last week on mastering different scenes and ways to control your smart home is that within the shortcuts app, there's a shortcuts action, which can open a specific app on a specific Apple TV in your home. So if you think about that for maybe automations you'd wanna run, particularly from shortcuts that you could run from let's say your phone or an iPad, then those can not only set, let's say a HomeKit TV to the right input, but it can also bring up a particular app you wanna watch on the Apple TV. So it can just take a lot of the work. I mean, and then on top of that, just set the lights in your room to be exactly what you want for that type of content. So, it, you know, it can just put all of that stuff together and make for a really seamless experience. So look in the shortcuts app for that action for the Apple TV. And um, that can be a really handy feature too, if you wanna have that level of control. But I just mentioned something called a HomeKit TV, and you might be familiar with this, and it might be sort of the, the killer product that means you don't need an Apple TV in certain cases. And a HomeKit TV appears as an accessory in HomeKit, kind of like a light or an air purifier. You get a little square for the television, and then you can configure it to set the power of the TV being on or off 
off, but then you can also set the input of the TV. So let's say you want to turn on your TV and have it set to the input to play live television from your cable box. Maybe you want to watch a sporting event. Then you can do that and connect it with, let's say, lights. So you want to watch your favorite team play. You can set the lights in the room to the colors of your team and then turn on the TV and set it to the cable box input. But that said, you're not going to be able to set the cable box to a particular channel or anything, at least with uh, stuff we're talking about today. So um, there are still some limitations there, but still to be able to power your TV on and off and set the input can go a long way to making your TV a lot easier to use. And that's true not only for you, but also potentially for other people using the TV. I made a video all about that previously and showed a bunch of different scenes that I set up with a HomePod so I could talk to the HomePod and get my TV to set exactly how I wanted for different things. And it's a great thing for my family as well. So a HomeKit TV is really nice. Just be sure to look out for TVs that explicitly state that they support Apple HomeKit. There are a number of leading brands that do this, Vizio, LG, Sony. So not every TV from those companies uh, necessarily supports it, but keep an eye out and look for whatever TVs in your price range. Chances are you can find one that works with Apple HomeKit. And then from there, you just find buried in the menus of the TV, there's gonna be a HomeKit code. You scan it, add it to HomeKit, and you're off to the races. Now, another really quick reason why you might not need an Apple TV, let's say you already get one of these HomeKit TVs. If you already have some HomePod minis or other HomePods around nearby where this TV is gonna be, then they're already taking care of a lot of the HomeKit actions for you. So you probably don't need an additional HomeKit hub right there in that room and you know put this money elsewhere. Now, another piece of this is thinking about how you actually watch TV. Are you often using your phone or your iPad to let's say AirPlay or Chromecast different content to your television? And if you do that a lot, then of course the Apple TV isn't gonna be much benefit to you because often you, know, you wanna pull up the content on your phone and then cast at the TV. And you know, well, YouTube, which you're probably watching YouTube right now, well, YouTube does have an Apple TV app. It's okay. I find that when I'm watching YouTube in my living room, I like to use the Chromecast with the built-in Chromecast in my TV. So I can just use the YouTube app on my phone, on my iPhone, and connect with Chromecast to the TV. And it has this really nice queue management system that is trickier to do a similar kind of thing in the Apple TV app. Chromecast is really nice alternative to Apple stuff in certain cases like YouTube. And so if you're doing a lot of that, you might not need an Apple TV to just, you know, sit there. For some reason, my Apple Watch thought I was just going for an indoor walk. Maybe I was just gesturing so much that, uh, I don't know, <laughs> but that was pretty weird. Now, another one that you might overlook is do the apps and streaming services that you actually use, do they have Apple TV apps? Now, a quick way to find this out is if you search for the app on the App Store, let's say on your iPhone, then you'll see an option in there saying offers Apple TV app. And that will give you an idea of if that streaming service also makes an Apple TV app without even having to bother looking for it on your Apple TV. Now, one quick tip here, if you are a multiple Apple TV household, I do recommend turning on home screen sync. And what that allows you to do is have the same apps in the same places on each TV. And if you're a multiple Apple TV household and you have multiple people in your home, chances are that those correlate, then you can in Control Center set up different profiles for different people in your home and switch between them. Personally, we just use my profile and then just have all the apps there. It's pretty simple that way. But if for one reason or another you wanna have customized settings for each person, there are profiles now on Apple TV that you can switch between. Now, let's say you heard all of that stuff and you've decided, yes, you do want an Apple TV. Well, thankfully, Unlike a lot of cases with Tech YouTube, there is a very clear answer of which model you should buy for the Apple TV. Don't buy the Apple TV HD and don't buy the Apple TV 4K with 64 gigabytes of storage. Buy the Apple TV 4K, 32 gigabytes of storage. It's gonna give you Thread and a newer processor from Apple. 
and that's not stuff you get with the Apple TV HD. So even if you don't have a 4K TV, you're still, I think, getting better benefits with the 4K option. And then if you happen to upgrade your TV or something down the road, then you already have 4K in the Apple TV to support it. And then don't waste your extra $20 on the storage for the 64 gig version. I'm always with computers or iPads trying to figure out and get as much storage as I can afford. But with this case, unless you're using like tons of games on your Apple TV, there's no reason to get the 64 gig version. And let me know in the comments below, would you get an Apple TV for your next TV setup or not? And if you want to see some more details of how I configured my HomeKit TV, check out my video I did on that. It's a little bit older, but it still all applies. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. I have a really exciting product review in the works that was gonna come this week, but just one thing led to another. Uh, technical issues that are gonna make for a great story, but it's not ready yet. Thanks again so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.